Ms. Christina Timponi of the Cam Cambilahi Advisor of International Affairs, National Indian F Foundation, Brazil. Christina will be speaking to us today on behalf of the Anne, the Marie Aug Augusta Asarati, the Deputy President of the National Federation of Indigenous Peoples, or FUNI. Maria is the Director of Promotions of Sustainable Development at FUNI. Christina will be talking to you about the sustainable development. Hello everyone, uh, my, my name is Christina. I work for the official Brazilian National Foundation for Indigenous People. We call it FUNAI. Uh, this uh, body is the official body that takes care of the promotion and protection of indigenous rights in Brazil. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, uh, acknowledge the representatives of all the countries that are here today especially the representatives of indigenous uh, peoples from Australia and from other countries. And I would like also to acknowledge the Australian government for the initiative to promote this conference and for the launching of the World Indigenous Network. Thank you very much for inviting us to be part of it. It is with a great honor and pleasure that I address myself to you today to talk a little bit about the experience of Brazil in relation to the Brazilian official policy of territory environmental management of indigenous lands. Before I begin, please allow me to introduce a little bit of the history of colonization of Brazil. Five centuries ago, the Europeans arrived in America for the first time, landing on Brazilian soil. It is the start of a gradual reorganization of the land structure previously occupied by indigenous peoples. Colonization as a historical phase lasted until the early 20th century and marked the process of social, political, and economic information, formation of our country. The story of Brazil is not different from the other colonized countries. The spread of colonization in time and territory brought many indigenous societies to extinction as a result of violent clashes, the spread of diseases brought by the Europeans, and the adoption of different strategies to promote the assimilation of the indigenous into the new society under construction. Today, uh, when we look at the distribution of indigenous peoples in the map of Brazil, we clearly identify the main consequences of political and economical Europeanization of Brazil. The first contact took place along the coastline and only gradually the Europeans advanced to the interior. That's why nowadays the largest concentration of indigenous takes place in the Brazilian Amazon region. As you can see here, um, uh, those uh, yellow spots uh, shows the concentration of uh, indigenous population. The yellow ones are showing until 50 individuals or until 100 individuals. And the or orange big spots uh, show the concentration uh, of over 5,000 or, yeah, 5,000. So as you can see, the coastline here, uh, when the, the Europeans arrived, the in indigenous peoples, they were pushed over the, uh, the inner country and that's where the Amazon forest is. So the most part of the population today is concentrated on, those, uh, uh, on this area. Um, today, uh, we are approximately uh, 896,000 indigenous living in Brazil. According to the 2010 census, this figure represents roughly 0.4% of the country population. They are dispersed around 688 indigenous lands and in a few urban areas. Brazi Brazilian authorities have confirmed the existence of 32 indigenous groups not yet contacted, but have records accounting for the existence of 50 more such groups still waiting for confirmation. Uh, this is just to show you um, a few pictures of the uncontacted uh, 
tribe. This is an area close to Acre, which is a state in Brazil, uh, close to the border to Peru. Uh, if you can see here, uh, those, those pictures were taken from uh, an airplane, and uh, you can see some of the individuals. And it's very amazing, because most of people, they don't believe that we still have uncontacted tribes uh, in Brazil. Um, according to the 2010 census, there are 305 different indigenous groups and 774 spoken languages. When the National Foundation for Indigenous Peoples, Hunai, was created in 1967 and the Indian Statute of 1973 was established in Brazil, the prevailing ideologies were deeply ethnocentric. Variants of social evolutionism stated that humanity developed by evolutionary stages, which all social groups should invariably follow. At the time, the doctrine of legal guardianship, which considered the indigenous people to be relatively incapable, was still in force. Despite recognizing the existence of cultural diversity among the many indigenous communities, the, Indi the Indian Protection Service created in 1910 and subsequently FUNAI were initially responsible for integrating those groups into the dominant society. Legal guardianship only reinforced the patronizing and domineering approach of the Brazilian state when dealing with indigenous societies. The result was that they became profoundly submissive and dependent. This is just uh, to, to make very clear for all of you that uh, in the beginning, uh, Brazil has already a uh, hundred years of indigenous policy, official policy. But in the beginning of this policy, the idea of uh, protection of indigenous people was to integrate those people into uh, white man society. So uh, the pictures you can see there are very old pictures from the beginning of the century when those, the first contacts were made with those uh, indigenous groups. Lots of uh, groups died from this contact because of diseases or other kind of conflicts. And some of the ethnical groups, they just disappeared. Uh, the transition to democracy in the second half of the 1980s promoted an extensive debate on the indigenous question among civil society organizations and indigenous peoples themselves. In tandem with increased political participation, indigenous groups grew ever more organized and politically conscious of their interests. As a result, the involvement of non-governmental organizations devoted to the indigenous cause was very intense during 1986-88, when a constitu constitutional assembly gathered to draft the country's new constitution. The 1988 constitution, which Brazilians often call citizenship constitution, radically altered the prevailing ideological conceptions that informed indigenous police, police, sorry. It distinguished legal guardianship and secured full recognition of rights deriving from the cultural diversity and specificity of indigenous peoples of the country. The constitution also represented the legal framework of territorial protection as a way of enabling the physical and cultural reproduction of the indigenous peoples. Therefore, in the 19, 1990s, the indigenous policies were strongly based towards demarcation and titling of indigenous lands. Many land demarcations were implemented during this period. Uh, this is a map uh, where you can see all the, um, uh, the colored uh, areas. The, the map is not very good, but it, you, you can see that the colored uh, areas, all these are indigenous lands. Uh, you can see also that most of the big lands are concentrated in, in the Amazon forest. Those are the borders of Brazil with Venezuela, Peru, and, uh, and uh, Colombia, Guyana. Uh, but also, we have some few uh, indigenous lands in the coast, in the northeast, in the southwest, and in, in the coastline as well. Those are the smaller uh, lands. 
but we can say that the 19, 1990s were the era of the demarcation in Brazil, and the big lands, they were demarcated by uh, that time. Since its creation in 1967, FUNAI, as a unit of the Ministry of Justice, has undergone many and profound institutional transformations. Among its current concerns, FUNAI has strived for strengthening its institutional density in order to fully protect and promote the rights of indigenous peoples. A strong effort was put into restructuring the Office of Administration and Management in order to supplant the previously patronizing style and put in its place a new approach based on strengthening the autonomy and self-determination of these peoples. We replaced the outdated Office of Land Affairs and Aid for the official, uh, sorry, for the Office of Territorial Protection and the Office for Promotion of Sustainable Development. At the moment, we still need to address many challenges. We need to ensure full land entitlements and the exclusive rights of the indigenous people to explore the resources located in them. We need also to implement programs to promote productive activities in order to generate income and economic independence of those indigenous communities that, at the same time, endorse environmental and social sustainability. We need to find ways to safeguard and cherish the traditions and cultural expressions of more than 300 different ethnic, ethnic groups in the country. We need to call attention to all signs of exclusion, prejudice, and violence that still harass the indigenous to these days. We must ensure full access to social and citizenship rights, and most importantly, we have to consolidate a policy strategy to ensure that indigenous peoples are independent and can determine the future of the next generations by themselves. Indigenous lands rich in natural resources are highly targeted for economic exploration, potential exploration for mining, timber logging, and hydroelectric power production are the most appealing. Um, this is a um, this is just a, a slide to show you how um, indigenous lands are uh, conservated. So sometimes in, in Brazil, that's an argument we use to convince uh, authorities that how for the importance of the marcation of lands. So as you can see here, uh, this is the Parque do Xingu. It's a very well-known um, indigenous land in Mato Grosso. And uh, this is the land, and those are the borders of the land. So you see all the green preserves. And here it's another indigenous land. You can see better here the pressure from the outside and how the border of the land uh, maintains its, uh, its, environmental, its environment. Mm. As everywhere else in the world, natural resources available in such areas are not infinite. And their use should be primarily guided by the need to ensure the survival of the indigenous communities that inhabit the land and to respect their traditional way of life. In addition, the economic exploitation of these resources must be all requirements to ensure high standards of environmental protection so that the wealth and the well-being generated today does not come at the expense of future generations of indigenous and non-indigenous peoples. Moreover, the wealth resulting from the use of these resources cannot benefit only a small segment of the population. It should indeed be shared in order to promote the alleviation of poverty, social inequalities, and economic disparities that still endure in our country today. In order to feel, fulfill those principles, the Brazilian government enacted last year the National Policy for Territorial and Environmental Management of Indigenous Land. We call it Penegati. Its main goal is to ensure and promote the protection, restoration, conservation, and sustainable use of indigenous territories. 
As a result, we expect to nurture the best conditions for the survival and persistence of the indigenous peoples, not to mention the integrity of their cultural heritage. It is a policy that makes us very proud. In order to strengthen their autonomy and self-determination, the design of this policy was guided by the utmost recognition, respect, and admiration for the culture as well as the social and political organizations of indigenous peoples, their knowledge, practice, and traditional wisdom. But it also uh, the outcome of a splendidly demo democratic exercise, one built upon a highly participatory process of communication and agreement with indigenous communities across the country and via public consultation in respect to the 169 ILO conventions. So those are just some uh, pictures to show you the, how this policy was built up uh, through 2009, 2010. Uh, we made lots of uh, consultation, regional consultations uh, throughout the country. More than 1,200 indigenous peoples participated. This is the Northeast, the South, in the, in the center of Brazil, in the center as well, Mato Grosso, and in the north, Manaus, in the Amazon area. Uh, all the policy was built up together with the indigenous peoples. Along two years, we made uh, all those consultations and the principles of the policy w was uh, delimited by uh, uh, an exercise of government, uh, social, uh, civil society, and indigenous peoples. This policy involves the collaboration between Brazilian government and indigenous communities with the support of civil society groups. It intends to design and implement management plans for indigenous lands following existing guidelines on sustainable development. In practice, FUNAI coordinates in locus activities of consultation with the communities and civil society organizations regarding their life plans. It also fosters agreement among these communities and several government agencies around sustainable projects to be implemented in varying time frames. All this is done from the understanding that the indigenous peoples themselves know best how to manage their territories, what are the highest priorities, and which public provisions are most in need so that the community endures a proper existence. This policy is innovative because it reaffirms the role of indigenous peoples in the process of territorial and environmental management of their own land. It is also valuable as it calls a number of organizations of the state to act responsibly so as the, to preserve Brazil's precious social, cultural, and environmental heritage, which are indeed assets for the entire world. Each and every one of us is responsible for building a sustainable world. The future of the next generations depends on the actions of present day societies. And to conclude, uh, I would like to acknowledge the con and congratulate each one of the organizations and individuals represented here for their work in protecting the future of indigenous and tribal peoples. Let, let us all be sure that the total sum of our net material intellectual efforts are fundamental to the achievement of that goal and will certainly make a difference. In order to accomplish the conceivable dream of a better world, we have to keep our faith a never-ending fight for a fair society based on more fraternal and solidary communities. Thank you very much for your patience, and um, I'm available for questions outside if you have any. Thank you very much.